So, and there's um, a lot of emphasis among researchers and psychologists on what is called post-traumatic growth yeah. because it is incredible. We are seeing more and more that people are so able to get those resources that we have inside of us because we all do and apply them. And it has to do with your cognitive appraisal, how you appraise the situation. The situation is there, painful, difficult. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to choose? Because remember, we all have choices. Our attitude depends on the choices we make. So are you going to stay there and choose to stay there and, and just say, like, see what has happened to me and stay there and just be dwelling on the situation? Because it's different to go through the grieving process than to be dwelling and staying there. Okay. And the other thing is, like, well, let's see what I can do about this. And we have seen people going through these incredible transformations even despite pain and crisis. And oh, well, the, the famous Victor Frank, have you ever heard of him? He's a psychiatrist mm -hmm. that he was in the contra uh, concentration camp. And uh, he suffered tremendously. And he did studies on the prisoners of war. And he saw how amazing the prisoners who found meaning in their suffering could make it. Hmm. And it you know, developed into what is called logotherapy, logo is meaning, and all that. No? But that is very strong now because the thing is to find meaning on what has happened to you. What happened, you cannot change it, but you can change how you respond, not react how you respond to and it. how do you change it how do you go about are those steps that you have in your book are those the steps that you go about to, to change your attitude well the, the the principles take you from the first one mm -hmm. no that would be accept mm -hmm. your loss or your transition no and then the second one as I say that I believe a lot in going through the grieving process is live your grief live it, feel it, because grief can be expressed in many ways, you know, many dimensions, and one can start somatizing. You know, I said before, even to the extent of uh, having a heart attack, but we can develop, you know, migraines, stomach ache, dizziness, or that's a physical, or the social, you become isolated, you withdraw, or the Depression country. even, right? Definitely, that would be the emotional, mm -hmm. exactly, or anxiety. And of course, the spiritual, I'm big one, the spiritual, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the fourth dimension. And uh, we can really lose hope mm -hmm. and lose faith. So if we lose all that, we don't feel motivated. You know, and that's why uh, I call the, the, the book Your Guide for Strength and Hope, because hope is what makes us going what keeps us going. Mm -hmm. So if we find meaning in the things that had happened, sometimes even with the death of someone mm -hmm. that is such a great loss, I would say the greatest loss, people sometimes even put organizations together to help others. Or maybe if they lost a, uh, a parent and they had a bad relationship with the other parent, that would be the opportunity. They, they change their priorities in life sometimes and they get closer. Or if you were living a life with no purpose, no meaning, then it's the moment to see that we are moral, that we're gonna die because you know everything that is alive dies. So we may start appreciating more our lives and the lives of ones that are close to us. So we, do, we wouldn't be um, wasting too much time fighting, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they also say that when you lose a job or when, you, when something like that happens to you, that um, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So it could lead to some other opportunities that you might not have thought of if you were still at this present position in time. Exactly. And I have had clients, because I have my practice, I have clients that they have lost, you know, their jobs or financials with all this crisis, no? And they maybe they never thought about going to another career or doing something else. And they have taken it, you know, as an opportunity. And we go there, you know, we do a lot of 
uh, insightful exercises to come very close into your inner self. Mm -hmm. What is there? Maybe they have stayed in the job for 10 years, not enjoying the job per se, but to have just a job. And life is more than having just a job. So it has been opportunities so to expand. Some people have gone back to school. And it's interesting because I teach, you know, um, I am an adjunct faculty member of Kaplan University, which is an online uh, university. I've been teaching for years for them. I love it. And I teach ethics. And it has been an increase in all these schools, in students enrolling, uh -huh. because they want to see new venues. So again, look, it depends on how you see it and how you see it. You stay there just complaining see what has happened to me and even choosing sometimes the victim role or saying do you know what I'll see what I can do about this and you know so it depends on our attitude and to know that we can make it to have faith in ourselves and if of course if we believe in higher power no, to have faith in God yeah. well thank you so much very good information and a lot of good tips if, if we ever find ourselves in that position or if we know of someone who's been uh, is going through a similar situation. And if you'd like more information on how to cope with a loss, you can actually visit Ligia's website. She's got a website and it's ligiahuben.com. And there you're going to find information on her book, which is Transform Your Loss, Your Guide to Strength and Hope, which is also available in Spanish. You can also sign up to receive her free newsletter and even follow her blogs. Coral Gables Now is just